Hey everyone, I just got this rain barrel that will collect water for my garden. You know, it's a great source of water that I wouldn't be able to use if the rain here was polluted. Oh hey, you know that my cousin and her friend know a lot about water pollution. I'm meeting up with them in just a bit. I'll finish setting this up later. So we'll see what they have to say about it. For now, welcome to Woodsy Owl Live 3. Here, here, here. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey I'm Chat. Chat. What's up? <laughs> oh, and hey, y'all. Welcome to Woodsy Owl Live 3, brought to you by the USDA Forest Service and the Natural Enquirer. I'd like to introduce you to my super smart pollution experts. I'm Montana. And I'm Genesis. And I'm her big cousin, M. Chad Edwards. Now, Woodsy Owl has got a lot of famous things, but its most famous one is... Give, Give a, a hoot, hoot don't, don't pollute. pollute. So, for Wizzy Owl Live 3, we're doing a series of three videos talking about pollution. In our previous episode, we talked about air pollution, but water can also contain pollutants. The science of water pollution, and, and really any pollution, can be pretty scary because it can be dangerous. But don't worry, everything we're going to talk about today can be addressed through solutions from scientists and you. So don't feel like you can't go and enjoy a beautiful creek. Feel free to get outside and play. We're going to talk about the science of water pollution, but we're also going to talk about what experts are doing to help. And later, we'll even give some tips for what you can do to help your water quality. In the meantime, let's talk some science. Water pollution is the contamination of water sources with material that makes it unhealthy for drinking, cleaning, cooking, or even swimming. Water pollutants include bacteria, parasites, chemicals, and trash. There are four major sources for water pollution. Industrial waste, agricultural waste, sewage, and urban runoff. Industrial waste can cause water pollution when industries discharge chemicals into waterways. This can include heavy metals like mercury, toxins like pesticides, plastics, and radioactive waste. Agricultural waste can cause water pollution. Farms often use fertilizers and pesticides, which can then get into the water runoff and contaminate waterways. Untreated sewage can cause water pollution by allowing solid waste to enter waterways. This can lead to polluting waters with pathogens like E. coli. Wastewater sounds like it's time for a little toilet humor. What do you call- Absolutely uh, not. <sighs> Fine. <clears throat> urban runoff can cause water pollution. This happens because materials like concrete and asphalt tend to pick up gasoline, oil, heavy metals, and trash. Rainwater carries these pollutants into storm drains and out into waterways. Water that carries pollutants connects to the water cycle. Right, water moves around the planet, changing forms as it goes. Sometimes it's a liquid like a river. Sometimes it's a gas like water vapor, and sometimes it's a solid like ice. Regardless of its form though, once water is contaminated, it carries pollution around with it. This can hurt entire ecosystems by making aquatic plants and animals sick. Not to mention human health. It's not good for you to drink contaminated water. Fortunately, we have a lot of regulations in place that help prevent water pollution. Both industrial waste and sewage are often treated before they enter waterways. This is usually done in two stages. In the first stage, wastewater passes through screens and pipe chambers that remove solids in the water. In the second stage, the water is purified. It enters more chambers that allow the bacteria in the water to break down all other organic matter. After that, chlorine is added to kill the remaining bacteria and pathogens. That's really creative. And creative concepts are also used to prevent agricultural waste by fighting erosion. Erosion is a natural occurrence of soil, rock, and other top surface material moving from one location to another. This is sometimes caused by gravity, wind, or water. Large hills can be tricky for farmers because the land is prone to erode. Over time, it simply slides down the hill. 
The problem is that when it rains, it causes the land to erode, carrying polluted soil and water with it. That water runoff, which is often full of manure and other chemicals, makes its way downstream and contaminates other bodies of water. It can even find its way into the ocean or our drinking water. So instead of plowing up and down a hill, farmers will often plow across it. These horizontal beds encourage the soil to stay in place rather than sliding down the hill. They can also use a couple of neat practices in agroforestry. Agroforestry is the practice of mixing trees, shrubs, crops, or animal production systems together to create environmental, economic, and social benefits. To help prevent water pollution, there are two agroforestry practices. The first is to create a buffer of trees, shrubs, grasses, and other plants by growing them close to rivers, streams, lakes, and other bodies of water. These buffers protect water from potential harmful byproducts that may be caught in above ground and below ground surface runoff. The second agroforestry practice is to manage trees, livestock, and feeding areas for animals, all as one system. The trees provide shade and improved habitat for the livestock as they grow. It also increases biological diversity and water quality protection while reducing soil erosion. Another technique for preventing agricultural water pollution is to create man-made wetlands. These boggy areas trap runoff water and its pollutants, rather than allowing it to move into our drinking water. Scientists are also trying to develop better pesticides and fertilizers for crops so that those chemicals don't pollute the groundwater to begin with. There are also ways to help urban areas fight water pollution. A lot of it comes from stormwater. Storm drains collect water that's run off our streets and driveways, so it's full of gasoline, oil, and even trash. Those pollutants go into storm drains. That water runs downstream, and just like agricultural runoff, contaminates other bodies of water. It can even find its way into the ocean or our drinking water. So it's best to slow the flow of storm water. If the storm drains don't back up, they decrease the spread of pollution. Scientists are also looking into using urban trees and other plants to help manage storm water runoff. Trees absorb the rainwater instead of letting it run off into storm drains. And you know what's better than one tree? Lots of trees. Scientists looked at lands near water sources such as forests, grasslands, farmlands, and other developed land to see which one had the highest quality of water nearby. They found that forests produce the cleanest water. Knowing this, we can get higher quality water from forests so that cities and towns don't have to go through as much water to treat contaminated water so it's safer for us to use. It's actually what they do in New York City. That also means we should keep our forest water as clean as possible. Scientists and land managers are working to develop best practices for themselves. So when they're working in the woods, they don't do anything that disrupts the soil and adds anything harmful to the waters running through a forest. Trees also help treat water with a process called phytoremediation. I know, it's a big word, right? <laughs> Basically, it means that trees can actually soak up water and break down pollutants. Sometimes bodies of water also get too many nutrients in them, such as nitrogen or phosphorus, which prevents the water from having enough oxygen. We call this occurrence eutrophication. I know, it's another big word, but you can handle it. But the good news is that phytoremediation helps solve this problem too. Trees can absorb the extra nutrients and leave enough oxygen for the water. Scientists have specifically discovered that poplar and willow trees have a long history of removing pollutants from soil and waterways. Phytoremediation is a low-cost way to fight water pollution, and it works in both urban and rural areas using the power of trees. Of course, something that really hurts our trees and forests are wildfires. But wildfires can also impact the water quality. When they burn materials, they can release harmful chemicals that end up getting into the water. Wildfires also contribute to erosion. They take away plants, so there's not as much vegetation to absorb water, which can cause flash floods and landslides. Fortunately, scientists are looking into ways to manage wildfires, which will also protect water quality. As you can see, it's really important that experts are able to accurately measure water quality. 
So scientists are also working on ways to make water quality monitors that will be accurate, easy to use, and inexpensive to make. Like this one that students were able to build during a single lab day. These students are able to help take water samples. The more samples that scientists have, the more accurately they can determine the quality of large areas of water. So remember, there are always ways that we can help. In fact, a great place to start is with more of our programs. We've done two programs called Freshwater Live, and you can find them on the FS Nature Live YouTube channel. We talk about where our drinking water comes from, where it goes, and how it all connects to the water cycle. Another great resource is the Natural Inquirer. They take scientific research papers and rewrite them in a language for students of a wide range of grade levels. All of the Natural Inquirer resources are free to order or download. Like this publication called Full Throttle Model. Here, they discuss the problems scientists are finding with the water quality in the Great Lakes area, as well as what they plan to do about restoring it. See what happens when you read? And if you're really interested in all this water science, maybe you'd like to make a career out of it. In fact, our friend at the Forest Service, Farah Masumi, made a video about some possible options. Let's check it out. Although water pollution is a major health concern, the USDA Forest Service hires many experts to help solve the problem. You could be one of those folks someday. Aquatic ecologists study interactions between aquatic wildlife and their environment. Hydrologists study water in streams, soil, and plants. Hydrogeologists study the way water moves through soil and rocks. And there are many other options if you're interested. Finding water pollution also requires water treatment technicians, water chemists, and even marine biologists. If you'd like a great jumping off point, check out the Natural Inquirer's scientists and engineer cards, which are free to order or download. These cards highlight our rock stars in aquatic science, so you can see if their jobs sound interesting to you. For example, our friend, Dr. Zanathia Barnett, is an aquatic ecologist with the USDA Forest Service. She's also an astecologist, which means she focuses on crayfish, but in general, she studies how the changes humans make in our aquatic ecosystems affect wildlife. We have to remember what we do impacts everyone. Thanks, Farah. And if you want to make an impact, be sure to check out our other Woodsy Owl Live videos coming up. In one week, we're going to talk about what you can do to prevent both air pollution and water pollution. In two weeks, Join us for a live question and answer program where our experts will answer your questions live. Also, leave a question in the comments section of this video before September 21st, 2023, and we'll try to answer it during the live show. But why wait until then? If you're looking for more programs like this one, check out our other FS Nature Live series. We have programs on climate change, freshwater, grasslands, pollinators, and much more. In fact, you can even find our previous Woodsy programs. That's Woodsy Owl Live 1 and 2 on the Natural Enquirer YouTube channel. In the meantime, remember what Woodsy Owl always says. Give a hoot, don't pollute.